Welcome back to your monthly Chicago True Crime Report, November 1928. I'm your host, Chad Breckenridge. And I'm Mary Very Harry Larry III. This is your trusted source on all things true crime. Opening with updates on Prohibition, it's still here. That pesky Volstead Act is still stopping me from being able to forget all my worst moments. Recently called the Noble Experiment by Herbert Hoover, it succeeded in none of its original goals. Alcohol consumption has only increased under Prohibition, despite consumption plummeting during the first year. With the passage of the 18th Amendment, which began Prohibition, and the Volstead Act, which enforced Prohibition, hundreds of restaurants and amusement establishments needed to close as they couldn't survive without legal alcohol sales. This cost thousands of jobs. Millions in liquor taxes were also lost. And convenient loopholes in the laws allowed many Americans to make their own alcohol at home. Other loopholes, such as allowing wine for religious purposes, led to increases in self-proclaimed rabbis and church attendants, and the number of pharmacies has tripled due to them being allowed to give out whiskey for medicinal purposes. And that leads us to a message from our sponsors, Not Wine in a Box. Hi everybody, welcome back to the show. As we were saying, many people exploited loopholes in the prohibition laws. However, many people also simply broke the laws, including our very special guest today, a member of Al Capone's gang, Tony Vroom Vroom Ferrari <laughs> Mussolini. Hi, thanks for having me. My name's uh, Tony Vroom Vroom Ferrari Mussolini. Tony here is a spokesperson for Al Capone. Yep, I am. Where do you Italian accent? Oh, that's just an intro. I'm not even Italian. Then why do you say vroom vroom? Why do they call me vroom vroom? Yeah. Eh, I like cars. What can I say? Vroom vroom. So tell me some stuff about Al Capone's current state. Is it true that he has syphilis? Is his brain capacity equal to that of a 12-year-old? I can neither confirm nor deny that right now. And why do they call him Scarface? He got that in a uh, brothel fight. He sure likes those brothels, doesn't he? Well, anyways, tell us a bit about what the old Alfonso does with his gang. Well, our main job is in bootlegging. For all you who don't know, bootlegging is the sale, manufacture, and transporting of illegal alcohol. This has allowed us to become filthy rich. You see, we love prohibition because, pro because it's allowed bootlegging for us to become extremely profitable. And with our newfound millions, we've been able to invest back into the communities with brand new brothels and gambling rings. Well, speaking of bootlegging, where exactly do you sell that alcohol? Well, I can't tell you exactly where, but we sell them in speakeasies. Oh yeah, I've been to a few of those. I mean, uh, what are speakeasies? They're hidden bars where alcohol is sold, right? Yeah, pretty much. People are able to go in, buy alcohol, talk, whatever. Lots of people go to speakeasies. The one I frequent, for example, is quite popular with local politicians and businessmen. Well, that's all the time that I've got. I've got to get back to the illegal manufacturer of alcohol. See ya. Well, that's all for Mr. Ferrari Mussolini. Now here's a message from our sponsor, Not Illegal Boat Bars. Welcome back. Our final segment is on the people who are trying to jail people like Mr. Ferrari Mussolini and Al Capone. Those would be the infamous Untouchables. The Untouchables are members of the U.S. Bureau of Prohibition, who are mainly based here in Chicago. 
Their main job is to try to stop crime and stop Al Capone. They're mainly based here in Chicago and they're called the Untouchables because they're known to resist anything, even large bribes, and are known to be fearless. Fearless they are, but that's all the time we've got today. Thanks for tuning in to this month's edition of Chicago True Crime Report Monthly. I'm Chad Breckenridge, signing off. And I'm Mary Berry Harry III, signing off.